resources and energy for outstanding international success in the production, processing or value adding of extractive resources or the provision of energy or resource related equipment, services or technology. This award is presented by Fortescue's Group Manager Priority Projects, East Coast and New Zealand, Angela Walker. Now Fortescue are back of silver sponsors of this year's awards. As Angela heads to the stage, let's meet this year's resources and energy finalists. I'm delighted to be here to present the Resources and Energy Award on behalf of Fortescue. My name is Angela Walker and I head the Asia Pacific and Central Asia regions for Fortescue Energy. As a leader at Fortescue, I am privileged to be at the forefront of the global energy transition, aligning my career with the shift towards sustainable energy solutions. Since joining Fortescue over 18 months ago, I have contributed to the company's mission to becoming the number one integrated green technology, energy and metals company. Fortescue is implementing a US $6.2 billion roadmap to achieve real zero scope one and scope two emissions across our Australian terrestrial iron ore operations by 2030. Okay, let's get straight to business. The winner of the Resources and Energy Award is Microbiogen. Well, fantastic to uh, get this award. I guess the first people I want to thank is our scientists. And just to give you a little bit of the backstory, the company we founded in 2001, but it took us 17 years to get our first dollar. So if you can imagine being a scientist working in a lab where they say, what do we do for a living? And I say, well, we just spend money. That's a pretty good thing. And I would point out that the uh, average scientist in our company has been with us now for 14 years. So I don't know whether they can't get another job anywhere else, but they certainly seem to like working for us. And the second thing I'd like to thank is actually the Australian government. There's no way we could have got where we are today without support through, through grants and the R&D tax credit. So any politicians out there, leave that R&D grant credit alone. It's fantastic. It really, really helps. And without it, we wouldn't be here. And then I thought I'd finish up with just a little uh, fun fact. So we export our microorganisms around the world. Our biggest market is, is the US. And last week, the US produced an all-time record of biofuels, which is what our, our yeast or microorganisms is used for, and it was 1.1 million barrels per day average. Now, a barrel of ethanol is 160 litres. So think about that. That industry is producing 1.1 million barrels every day, and most of that ethanol is actually produced using microorganisms developed right here in Australia. So really appreciate the award, and... Uh, Onwards and upwards, we're going to a whole different group of areas, but um, I'll leave that for the next time. So thanks very much. <laughs> uh, don't go away. Congratulations. Who knew about yeast? We all thought it was just in beer, um, but is any, in ethanol. That's a, an incredible stat. So many years without earning a dollar, what was the turning point? Well, the scientists did their job. And basically, we came up with a better microorganism. And, and another fun fact. So without our yeast, and our number one market is, is the US, the US today is producing 2 billion litres of bioethanol more per year than they would if they were using the old yeast. Put that in perspective again, that's seven times total Australian capacity for biofuels. Just by switching a microorganism, which is just a tiny, tiny little guy. Uh, so, who, who was the first customer? That actually Couldn't tell you. paid your dollar oh, for well, it. Oh, paid our dollar. It's a company called Novo, Novo Nisus out of Denmark. Right, OK. It's a, a great example of tenacity and patience. You deserve all the success that they've got. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Well done.